I'm gonna erase this last slip not there. So we have six actors and eight actresses are available for a play with four male roles and three female roles. Now I told you that if you, um, if it doesn't matter if you picked first, second, or third, then it's a combination. But if it matters in the order in which you're picked, first, second, or third, if you got different things, then it's a permutation because order would matter. This one a lot of people try as a combination. Not right now because you've never seen combinations, so of course you're not going to try as a combination. But um, this one is actually a permutation because four male roles, if they're roles, you assume them to be different roles, right? Um, on the diploma, I'm hoping they would say four different male roles so that you would know that it would matter if you were first, second, third, or fourth, right? Because you would get a different role. So order matters, okay? So we have um, seven roles that we're filling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need a male role, male role, male role, male role, female, female, female. It doesn't matter what order we pick them in. Like, does it have to be male, female, male, female, male, female, or anything like that? Does the order matter? No. So we're picking males and we're picking females. So we could split it up into two pieces because the order in which we pick them doesn't matter. How many males do we have to choose from? Total. Six. So we have six options for this role. Then we leave a person there, right? And they play that role. Then we have five. Then we have four. Then we have three. And then there's two people who don't get roles. Sucks to be that. Okay. Then we do the female part. How many females do we have to choose? Eight. So we have eight. Then seven. Then six. Now what we need to decide is these are all multiplied together, but what do we do with the male and female roles? Do we multiply them together or add them? We have to decide do we have an and between them or or? Yeah. If you add them, what would happen? You'd say there was an or, right? And a whole bunch of people said or. I um, said add, so it would be or. In order to fill this, do we need male roles and female roles? Or do we need male roles or female roles? Male and female, yeah. Everyone said add. So you have to watch yourself because um, everyone must add. If you do four male roles and three female roles, we need both. So we're going to multiply it all together. So what? Six times five times four times three times eight times seven times six. Anyone get it? Another way we could do this is we know order matters, right? And we're going down by one, correct? So we could use the P. So we have six rolls, P, four, and then we have eight, and we pick three. Multiply them. Okay. So they could write it that way. Then flip it over. All right. Andrew was asked to determine the number of arrangements of the letters of the word brains. So we have to decide first, are there any doubling letters in brains? No. B-R-A-I-N-S. Six letters, all different. In which the vowels are together. His reasoning is shown below. Since the vowels must be kept together, I will treat the A and the I as one element, A-I. This means I now have five elements instead of six to arrange in order. Five elements, A-I. B, R, N, S can be arranged in five factorial ways. My answer is five factorial. Is Andrew correct in saying that A and I should be combined? They're going to have to combine them together because what do they want? The vowels together beside each other. The way I do it is I don't think of it this way. I think of it this way. Okay, it's six letters, right? Brains. And we want the vowels together, so I hook them together so that they're actually stuck together, right? 
Now, did it say A, then I in that order? It just says vowels together, right? So for the first blank, what options do I have? Two, because I have A or I. Now, because it's a word, I assume no repetition. I'm going to circle the I, and now I have A, so I have one. We agree? How many letters left? Four, then three, then two, then one. This would be correct if I said the vowels need to be together at the front. Does it say that, though? No, it just says they need to be together. So let's think of it this way. This is the A and the I, right? This is the other four letters, correct? So this is one way they could be together, or two, because you can move them between these two letters, or you can move them between these two letters, or you can move them between these two letters, or you can move it to the back, could you not? So how many ways is that? One, two, three, four, five more ways, right? So let's look at this longhand. I would never expect you to do this, but I'm going to prove to you why. So longhand, we could go two, one, four, three, two, one, which is one way, right? Or we could go four, two, one, three, two, one. I just moved it between those two letters, right? Then we could go four, three, put the two, one, A and I here, two, one. Or we could go four, three, two, put it between those two letters, two, one, and the one. Or we could go four, three, two, one, and put the A and I at the back. Could we not? We agree? When we multiply these all together, what are each of these actually? They're the same, are they not? So instead of writing it out five times, I could just take this and multiply it by five, could I not? Instead of doing it this red way. Now, you always multiply it by one more than this number here. So this is a four, we're going to multiply by five. Now why is that? I'll show you how I count it. So this is one way, right? Or I can move it here, which is two. Or I can move it here, which is three. Or I can move it here, which is four. Or I can move it here, which is five. That's why it's always one more than this number. Okay? Does that make sense? So you have to remember when it says that you have to keep something together, unless it says at the front or the back, you have to be able to move it. Okay? So this one is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. And then what's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? 5. What happens when you count from one number and work your way back down to 1? Factorial. So it's 240. Because the 5, the 4, the 3, the 2, the 1 combine to make 5 factorial, right? I want you guys to try this one. See how you do. A and B. Okay. We have Frank, George, Hannah, Irish, Jacob, and Kim have playoff tickets for a hockey game in adjacent seats A3 to A8. In how many ways can they sit together in A3 to A8? How many of them are there? So this would be how many? Then, then, which is 6 factorial, which is, all right. Then it says George and Hannah are dating. <laughs> in how many of the arrangements would they be sitting together? So we have to sit them together. So, and then, how many options for this one? Two, and then this one, because this could be George or Hannah, right? Then one of them sits there in here. Then four, three, two, one. Then what? By five, right? Because it doesn't say they have to sit together on the left. So on the far left, they had to sit together, then we'd be done. They didn't, so you have to multiply by five because it's always one more, right? So it's going to be 240. Okay. 
Now, this last one says, just for the game, George and Hannah have a disagreement. Decide not to sit together. Real world problems, right? And how many of the arrangements in A would they be sitting apart? So, the easiest way to do this particular question is not to try and come up with all the cases on how you can make them sit apart, because that could take forever and you might miss one or two or ten or whatever, right? So the easiest way to do it is actually thinking about this in a way of our school. So if I ask you how many people are in this school but not in this classroom, what would be the quickest way to possibly figure that out? Rather than telling everyone, stop, no one's allowed to pee anymore, everyone needs to be here today, and then walk from each class and count how many are in there. Like, that's not really good, right? It's not the fastest way. So what would be the fastest way? Yeah, go to Mrs. Owen and be like, how many people are in this school? Then come to our class, count them. Subtract them, boom, you have all the people who are not in this school. Not in this, that doesn't make sense? Not in this class, but in this school, right? So I want all the ways that you don't put people together. When they ask this, you never actually find out all the ways you don't put them together. You don't just go there and try and come up with cases. What you do is you take the total ways you can arrange them. What's the total ways you can arrange them, no restrictions? Six factorial, right? That's the absolute most way that we can rearrange these six people. Just like that would be like the total of all the people in the school, right? So this is always total, no restrictions. And if we wanted to find out how many people were in this school but not in this classroom, we would take the total and we'd subtract people from this classroom, correct? So if we want to know, if we wanted to figure out how many ways they can't sit together, we take the total and subtract the ways they can sit together. What would be left over? All the ways they can't. Because this year, six factorial is the absolute largest amount of ways I can rearrange them, right? And if I subtract off all the ways they're sitting together, what's left over? All the ways they're not, okay? So how, are the, how can we sit them together? Boom. This is how many we can sit them together, right? So 240. So it's going to be 720 minus 240. And what is that? Yeah? I am going to, I already signed some of the first ones, right? So you're going to now do 1 to 13 all of them. I know I've assigned half the first page, I think, anyways. I'm going to print off the sixth page because, remember, it didn't want to print for me yesterday. It didn't like me. You're going to do numbers 1 to 13, and you'll have about 20 minutes or so to do them, and then we're moving on. Okay? Okay. So we have uh, permutation with repetition. So up until now, we've done permutations, even words. They haven't had repeating letters in them, right? They've just been like kitchen and stuff like that without repeating letters. Today is the day where that changes. So we have a bookstore is advertising signed copies of books about three famous Canadian hockey players in the Hockey Hall of Fame, Wayne Gretzky, Patrick Waugh, and Steve Eiserman. And the books are arranged on a vertical display shelf stand. One possible arrangement is shown. Sketch all the possible arrangements of the three books. How many different arrangements are there? So we have Gretzky, Waugh, Eiserman. We have three spots. Instead of sketching out all the outcomes, how could we do this one quickly? Yeah. Yeah, we could do a tree. What else could we do? Like super fast, like we've been doing. Yeah. Three times. Nope. Nope. No, nope. you're arranging stuff in a shelf. Remember whenever you arrange books, what do you have to do? Three, and then you, yeah. So when you arrange things in a bookshelf, you're going to have three, and then you're going to leave a book there. Remember? Oh, I thought you said three to the power of. I didn't hear three factor. Yeah. I thought you were meaning like three to the power of three, and I was like, no. Three factorial? Yeah. This is true. So, 3 factorial is 6. 
So there's six different ways, and we could actually arrange these out and find the six different ways, right? And that would be something we've done so far. Then here is B. The bookstore sells out of autographed Wayne Gretzky books, including the display copy. So all of them are gone. The sales clerk replaces the Wayne Gretzky book with a second copy of Patrick Waugh's book. One possible arrangement is shown. Sketch all the possible arrangements of these three books. How many different arrangements are there? So what's the difference between this one and this one? We want different arrangements. Could I go three, two, one again? No, why not? Because there's two of the same. If you close your eyes and I flip those wall books like this and tell you to open your eyes and say, has the arrangement changed? You'd say, nope, still the same, right? So we could list the different ones trying to go that way. But what we can do when you have these ones is we treat the top just like we did there in the previous one. Three, two, one. Okay, we treat the top just like we did before. So we always, even if there's double ups, we always treat them like they're all different, okay? And then we get rid of the issues by dividing out our problems. So we have two books that are the same, right? So we're actually going to divide by two factorial then. You always divide by however many double ups or triple ups. So if there were three that were the same, you do three factorial, which would make no sense because if you three factorial, you have three factorial, which is one, which is one way, so it would make it work. So dividing by this double up factorial gets rid of all of those cases where this is the same as this, right? So it's going to be three factorial divided by two factorial. So there's three different ways, which makes sense because you could go like that, or you could put the was at the end in the middle, or you could put the was at the bottom and the eyes at the top, right? There's only three different ways you could rearrange them. Okay? So, we're going to look at the word rows. How many ways can you rearrange the word rows? So this is drawing them all out, which is not fun. Or we know we can do blanks, correct? How many letters would be in the first one? Then, 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 or, which is 24, right? That's what we've done so far. But now, instead of getting rows, because every word we've had so far has not had doubling letters or tripling letters, Instead of having rows, we have Ross. So in the top, we treat it just like and pretend that all the letters are different, right? So it's still going to be the same, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But they're not all the same. These two words actually look exactly the same, don't they? And then this one and this one look the same, right? So what we do is we divide by our doubling letters. So if we take Ross, it's going to be R O S. S, and I always draw them like that so that if any of the letters are stacked, I know there's more than one of it, okay? So there's two S's, we agree? So then on the bottom, we're going to have two factorial. So there's actually 12 different ways we could write Ross. Not 24 anymore, because some of them look exactly the same when you flop the S's, right? Now instead of Ross or Rose, we have Rus. Like I told you, they don't actually have to make real words. That doesn't even have a vowel. So, yay. Um, how many ways can we rearrange it? Well, we treat it like it has four different letters on the top. So we'd have four options for here, three options for here, two options for here, and one for here. But this time we're going to divide by what? Three factorial. So it's going to be 24 divided by 6. So actually, there's only four different options of words when you have RSSS, right? Because you'd have RSSS, SRSS, SSRS, SSSR. That's it. Make sense? All right. So here it gives you a little thing. The number of permutations of n objects where a are the same of one type and b are the same of another type, etc. You do the total number of letters or objects 
divided by the double ups. So we're going to look at the word Vancouver. V-A-N-C-O-U-V-E-R. So what do I notice? I have two V's, correct? I'm going to rearrange Vancouver. So on the top, Vancouver's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So instead of drawing the nine blanks and going nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, with multiplication symbols, what could I have just done? When is it not going to be nine factorial? Right. If if it was like fair game, all letters, like if it was like a license plate or something. Also. It might not be 9 factorial if there's a restriction, like it has to start with a V or it has to end with an R, right? Then you would do that separately. But on the bottom, it doesn't matter. We're still going to have 2 factorial because we have 2 Vs. And what's that? What do we get? 9 factorial divided by 2. Just got it. You guys try mathematical. Mathematical. M A T H E M A T I C A L. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fun. Twelve factorial over what? Three factorial, two factorial, two factorial. Because if you think about it, do this in your calculator. Go three factorial times two times two. Do three factorial times two times two. Yeah, you can, but two factorial is just two. That's 24. Okay, now do seven factorial. Five thousand forty. Much larger, right? You'd be dividing by 5,040 instead of 24. Huge, right? So we don't want to do that. So we have to always write them separately. 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay? The answer they're going to give you on your diploma, you guys, is they're going to give you the answer to this, no brackets on the bottom. So if you don't put brackets in your denominator and put this into your calculator, what it's going to do is order of operations. So it's going to go 12 factorial if there's no brackets, right? It's going to go 12 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Take that answer, multiply it by 3 factorial. Take that answer, multiply it by 2. So it's going to get huge instead of smaller. Okay? So if you don't remember to put brackets on your denominator, you're going to get a different answer, and I promise you that answer is going to be there. Because if I was writing the answers to the test, that would be one of mine, because just dropping the brackets off gets it wrong. Okay? And what do you get? Something large. One nine nine. What's that? Nineteen million nine hundred fifty-eight thousand four hundred. So that's pretty big. So if you tried rearranging mathematical and getting all the outcomes by trying to draw them, I think you might miss one or two, or a couple million. You know, you just stop, you just cry for a little while, and say, "I'm done. Can't do this." Okay, I just like, hmm, hmm, yeah, no. Um, okay, example two, Brett bought a carton containing 10 mini boxes of cereal. It's making me hungry. There are three boxes of cornflakes. I do like myself some cereal. I'll even eat Rice Krispies. Two boxes of Rice Krispies, one bo box of Cocoa Pops, a box of Shreddies, and the remainder are Raisin Bran. So how many are Raisin Bran? Over a 10-day period, Brett plans to eat the constant contents of one box of cereal each morning. He's not going to get extra hungry. You just have him one box. Even if he's hungry, he's going to have to suck it up and eat a sandwich or something. Maybe some cheese. I don't know. Why not cheese, right? Everyone likes cheese. All right.
How many different orders are possible if on the first morning you must start with raisin bran? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. First morning, he wants raisin bran. How many raisin bran are there? Three. He eats one box of raisin bran. How many boxes are left? And how many boxes are left of everything? Nine. You were correct. You were correct. You just split them into kinds, which I like. I appreciate. Organization. Um, nine, then eight boxes. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then what do we have to do? Unless someone sat on a box of Raisin Bran, you can't tell the difference between them. Someone sat on them, obviously, a squish box, but no one's sitting on these. They're nicely placed in your cupboard. So, what do we have to remember to divide by? The ones that are the same. 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. So remember when I told you guys at the beginning of the year when we went over a question, it was black cars and they were different models of black cars? And I think red cars, blue cars. I remember, I remember being black. And I said to you, because they're different models, it's it's easy, you can just do them. But if they were the same model, you would do the question the exact same as you did before. So you'd start with a black car here, so say there was five, and a red car here, and there's three, and you'd fill in the middle. But if they were the same model, that would mean they looked exactly the same, correct? So you'd have to divide by however many they are factorial. It was the same. there was three rays of red. Yeah. Um, so I want you to complete questions one to five. I was looking for this and it was there. One to five.